This video is an introduction and explanation of the 2024-2025 Science Olympiad Tower Rules, specifically for Division B. I will only be discussing the design part of the rules, so please make sure you read and understand all aspects of the rules before any competitions. Before I get into the specifics of this year's rules, I thought it might be a good idea to take a step back and talk about this event in more general terms. The base rules for this event haven't changed in over 10 years, and perhaps a lot longer. The reason for that is they are primarily guided by the standardized testing equipment shown here. Regardless of what is being tested, typically bridges, towers, or boom levers, the testing of those devices is always done in the same way. There is a hard, flat testing surface with a 20 centimeter square hole in the middle for bridges and towers, and a rigid wall with a hook for boom levers. The loading involves a 5 by 5 centimeter block with an eye bolt through the middle. From there, an S-hook is used to attach a chain which connects to a bucket with another S-hook. The bucket hangs from the device above the floor and sand is then loaded until it breaks or a full load of 15 kilograms is achieved. Loading can be done with a nice auto loader system like this or by hand. The core principle of this event, regardless of the year, involves trying to build the most efficient device. The rules change every year with design restrictions and potential bonus scoring enhancements, but at the end of the day, we are trying to build a device where the maximum load it holds divided by its mass is the highest. For example, here is a tower column that weighs 1.834 grams, and when it broke during testing, the bucket with sand, loading block, and chain weighed 13,246 grams. That would mean its efficiency is just over 7,222. This is a very important concept to understand, and it's the basis for scoring in this event every year. Here is a picture of my primary testing surface. For now, you can ignore the white lines and just focus on the core piece and the 20 by 20 centimeter hole in the middle. Here is a precise scale drawing of the testing surface with just the 20 by 20 centimeter hole. The rules state that the size of the rest of the testing surface must be at least 55 centimeters long by 32 centimeters wide. In my experience, it's a good idea to assume the minimum size for most competitions. While generally not applicable to bridges or boom levers, it has been common for the towers event to expect to have a 29 centimeter circle drawn on the testing surface to designate part of the requirements for the bonus scoring. Here is the CAD drawing with the 29 centimeter circle. The next general specification usually involves specifying where the 5 by 5 centimeter loading block must be. It is typically stated that it must be in the center of the 20 by 20 centimeter square within a tolerance of 2.5 centimeters in any direction. That means that the blue loading block must be within the green space here. Generally, you want to design symmetric devices if possible, which means the block will be in the center, but there is some room for error or minor design tweaks. With all that background, now let's start talking about this year's specific Division B tower rules. The big change this year compared to last is that there is an 8 centimeter ring that needs to fit around the tower at the height of 25 centimeters off the testing surface. That means our towers this year are going to have a wide base at the bottom and a narrow column on top. The height requirement of 50 centimeters is the same as before. So roughly speaking, our towers will be half base and half column. The rules for the bonus scoring have not changed from last year. What that means is you can either choose a base that only spans the 20 centimeter square hole, shown in blue here, or attempt to span the 29 centimeter diameter circle as shown in orange. If you attempt the bonus design, you will also need to hold the entire 15 kilograms to achieve the extra 5 kilogram load bonus. If the device fails before 15 kilograms, your score is computed with the actual load held, just like the non-bonus version. There are many trade-offs and decisions to be made when deciding to try for the bonus or not. I will discuss those in more detail in future videos. Here you can see the shape of what a completed non-bonus and bonus design would look like. Notice that the top column part is identical in both cases. That will become very important when I talk about the construction techniques in future videos. Here you can see that the completed tower is 50.5 centimeters. It might be hard to tell from the picture, but trust me that the jig heights add up to exactly 50.5 centimeters. The 5 millimeter extra is to have some buffer to be above the 50 centimeter minimum height specified in the rules. 
Here you can see that the column alone is exactly 26 centimeters. Remember that the rules state that the 8 centimeter ring must fit around the completed tower at a height of 25 centimeters above the floor. That would be equivalent to fitting around the column at 5 millimeters above the floor here. Because the jig is slightly tapered and wider at the bottom, if it fits at the bottom of this column, that means that this tower would be compliant with the design rules with some room to spare. Remember when thinking about your design, the ring must fit around the completed column, not just the assembly jig. Don't forget about the added width of whatever legs you are choosing. It is a good idea to test your design with a real ring like this, just so there are no surprises on competition day. In the next video of this series, I will show my benchmark Division B build. This will give everyone a pretty good idea of what is possible and a score to compare against. In future videos, I will talk about the overall approach I took to achieve that build and talk about the specific construction challenges. Thanks for watching and please feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.